from Romans, Paul was answering people's questions and therefore everything written in Romans is sometimes not just what Paul said, but sometimes people's questions. So when you're reading Romans, obviously the context is for those who um, were in the interim period before the end of the age, who were living in the in the tension between what was and not yet, and what was yet fully fulfilled and what was yet to come when Jesus um, came to end the old and fully institute the new. Um, now, in that reality, when you're reading these passages, you've got to take the context and the audience and where it was relevant. And today we're in a different age. We're living in a different time. Now, if it says if, it's not posing a question. It's a rhetorical question. If indeed. So in other words, yes, indeed. Not if, and therefore maybe not, but if, yes. So in a sense, everyone yes is um but it's posing it in the thing that someone's asked him a question about does this apply to everybody and he said well yes of course it does if indeed the spirit of god lives in you well yes you belong to to christ now it's the difference between what god knows and who and what god has done through jesus on the cross and the reality of people knowing it people don't yet know it therefore they don't live in the good of it so after the resurrection, yes, everyone was born from above. Therefore, everyone has the spirit of God in them. And the spirit of God in them is looking to reveal Jesus and the father to them. But they're often resistant, as Paul was before he had the encounter on the Damascus Road, when he said that the father was pleased to reveal his son in me. Already in him, already at work in him, but he was resisting it. So people can resist from their own understanding, from their own religious stuff. Um, it doesn't it's not automatic until the renewal of the mind and we come into full agreement to agree with God and therefore we're in union with him about that agreement in terms of the truth. So things are true, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's outworked in everyone, even though it is the truth, because the facts that they don't necessarily know that truth may well yet need to be renewed in the mind so that the truth actually is the truth rather than just facts now facts don't weigh, weigh the truth they're just temporary and lots of things are temporary in people until they become a reality in people and we've also got 1600 years of religious programming which unfortunately has lost the reality of what these things really meant and the truth of what these things really meant you know the spirit of god is in everybody and in the reality, yes, he gives life to our mortal bodies. Now, there's a sense where that obviously does include our physical being. And I believe God does want us to live in, in the fullness of resurrection life and in the fullness, therefore, immortality. But most people are not conditioned into believing that. They believe the opposite of that. They believe that it's guaranteed that you're going to die one day. So that's essentially how, how you live. So our minds do need a total deconstruction from 1600 years of religious programming so that we can actually begin to come into the reality and the truth of who Jesus is as the truth. And we can live in that sense. So what is true is not automatically applied to everyone until they apply it in their lives. And that is the difference between what God has done and our appropriating what he has done in the reality of the relationship that we have with him nothing is just automatic he has done it the work of the cross is finished but we, it still has to be applied to our lives and the application of it is done relationally i'm not talking about getting a set of beliefs and trying to believe them or trying to have faith in it so that it works the relationship comes from jesus the way the truth and the life and the revelation of the father that he brings us into so the just because it says if it's not that means it might not if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do belong. Yes, that is true. But everyone has the spirit of Christ because they do belong. They belong to him, but they don't know it. So just because it's posing a question or that is the question that someone may have asked him, Paul then goes on to challenge that um, with the reality of what is now true, that we are all him. The love of God will never fail. We can never be separated from the love of God. Um, that is the reality. 
we still need to be reconciled into that reality and we're ministers of reconciliation to help people come into the reality of the truth of what is already true but may not be true for everyone yet until that truth is realized in them and birthed into them and alive in them as we begin to enter into the fullness of it so I would encourage you just continue to pursue the relationship with God and that relationship will bring you into a deeper revelation of the truth rather than trying to understand Bible verses or understand what the Bible says or doesn't say. What does God say? What does Jesus say? What is the word of God, Jesus, say to you today? That is my sheep will hear my voice. He didn't say my sheep will read my book. So the book we have was written in the context of basically 2000 years ago to a group of people who were living in the transition, either Jewish people or Gentile people who are now all one people in God. There is no Jew nor Gentile. So they're all now one, but they don't they're not living like that. They're living in opposition. They're still living in blindness because the light has not yet dawned on them of what God has done for them. Our responsibility is to be the light in the world and to help people come into the revelation so that they can find that that reconciliation belongs to them and that they are children of God and God loves them in an unconditional way. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.